welcome to developers home and today we're going to discuss how can we deploy spark using docker container so normally when we install spark it's very difficult to install and we need to configure it and when we are using spark specifically for data engineering purposes we need to install external libraries like when you want to connect to aws s3 bucket or edls or blob storage or if you want to connect to google cloud storage or if you want to store your files in a delta format into lake house or if you want to connect different databases like snowflake mysql postgres sql no sql so for these scenarios we need to externally also install this all the libraries and sometimes we also need to take care of spark version and this library version so sometimes it's very difficult to configure and install spark properly so today we'll discuss that okay how can we easily install spark using docker if you go to docker hub and search for spark you will be having multiple spark providers like bitnami and apache spark which is like original official image but we're gonna use spark image from data mechanics because it's providing this all the connectors which we require will also install jupyter lab on top of that so it's easy to access from browsers and it's also already install python with conda and pip so these are the all internal things are already available so now what we can do is we can clone this in github repo so i have already cloned that github repo so now if i go to visual studio code i can see that i have this docker file and in that docker file i am using this data mechanics spark image which uses 3.2.1 version of spark after that i am saying that make working directory as a opt spark update pip install i also ask that i want to install these are the packages which is PySpark. I want to use JupyterLab, Pandas, PyML, and Delta Spark. So these are the packages I am suggesting because in a future, when we're gonna use this Spark image for solving data engineering problems using Spark, or when we will be learning Spark, so these are the packages will be required during that time. So I am asking to install this all the pip packages, and after that, I am saying that start JupyterLab. So we can, you know, that access this Spark and write Spark code from browser also. So now what we'll do is we'll first create this image and then we'll start this container. So I will just use commands from here. So it's easy to execute. And now as of now, I don't have any images available. So I will first say that, okay, build image first. So I'm going here saying that build image first. So once image is ready, we'll say that create container. And once container is ready, we'll execute this PySpark from Jupyter Notebook. We'll also try it from terminal. We'll also try it from Visual Studio Core. So whatever way is preferable with you, you can directly use that. So now we have our image is ready. And now we'll say that, okay, create container for us. And now I am going here and saying that, okay, I want to create container for this. So if I go here and say start this container and here you see I am exposing port number 8888 because I want to use Jupyter Notebook and which is running on port number 8888. So now we have this Docker container is ready. So we have Spark is successfully installed. What I can do is I can go to Docker desktop and from Docker desktop, I can see that, okay, I have image with name Spark home and I have Spark container, which is running. If I go inside Spark and check logs, I can have a link for Jupyter notebook with token. So I can see that, okay, my Jupyter notebook is running on port number 8888 and I'm also having this token. So I will copy this one from here. Now going to any of the browser, I'm going here and pasting it here. So this will start my Jupyter lab. If you go to this uh, GitHub repo, you will see that I also have one sample notebook and that notebook will use to taste that, okay, is that successfully spark is installed and configure or not and that's why i am just copying this going to this jupyter lab 
I can go this uh, Python 3 and now I'm saying that execute this one. So this is currently executed. Now I'm going and asking that create one Spark session for me. And this one goes and create Spark session. So this is currently running and it's creating Spark session for us. I can see few warnings, but at the end, the Spark session is creating and it's done now. So I have this Spark session is also created. Next step is just to make sure that this Spark session is successfully created or not. We just say that, okay, just give me all the configuration when this Spark session is created. So I will execute this and I can see that, okay, this is the host. This is my Spark session name, which is I have given here as an app name. And these are the drivers and executor which I have. So we are successfully deployed Spark and which we can also consume from JupyterLab. Second thing is, let's say if you wanna use Visual Studio Code for executing Spark or running Spark jobs or running Spark code. So what you can do is you can install Jupyter plugin here from Microsoft. Once this is installed, when you open any notebook, it will open this way. So now second thing is we need to connect this to our Docker container, our remote Spark engine. So what we can do is we can first, currently it says that, okay, it is using server as a local. So it's using my local server, but I want to use it from Docker container. So again, I need this token and link. So I am copying this and now going to Visual Studio Code and I say that, okay, I want to change my Jupyter server and I will say that, okay, now use this one. So now you see it's connected to a remote engine. Now I will execute this again. So it will go and run on remote engine. So this is successfully executed in uh, less than second. Second thing is I'm saying that start Spark session. So I'm saying that new Spark session get or create so if that session is already available just use that one and that's why it just took one second now i execute this one so it will give all the properties for that so this is how we can successfully execute spark code from visual studio code using jupyter notebook third thing is now what we can do is let's say if you want to submit your spark job and in that case, we need to go inside this Docker container and we'll also start it from here. So let's see if I write here PySpark. So it will also start this Spark session and here we'll see that uh, it will be also providing one link. So if in case you wanna check that, okay, what is currently happening inside that Spark job Using that web link, we can check. So here it says that, okay, Spark context web UI available at this link, which is 4041 port. And now if I try it from here, 127.0.0.1 and 4041, this will not work because we have only exposed port number 808888. So now what I will do, I will close this one and I will expose one more port. So I'm going back and saying that just uh, delete this one because I want to start this container with uh, one more port. So I'm going here and giving one more port. So now P4040, uh, 4040, for me 4040 will not work as it is used with one of other applications. So I'm going here, deleting it again. So I will just use 4141 in my case. So this 4040 port will be binded to my 4040. Okay, sorry, again, I need to do this. Uh, I need to use 4140. So now it says that, oh, I need to first delete that because this is already running with the same name. So no confusion, it's really simple. I'm just saying that, okay, I want to run this 4040 on 4041 port. So now if I go here, I have this container. I can also use Jupyter Notebook. So if I go here, it will be giving me a new link. 
so it will be giving me this new jupyter lab link which is running on 8888 but now what i can do is i just want to see that spark ui so what i can do i will go here i will write PySpark. so now it will give me that link i am hoping that it will start on 4040 port and that i will access from 4041 so now this is running on web ui 4040 but we have binded that with 4041 so 127 4041 4041 so here i have that spark ui so when we run any application from here when we're reading file or when we're doing any complex operations we can see this timeline how is it running what are the resources it is using what is the storage we have what are the current environment we have set up for starting this spark session and then what all executors we have with us and if there is any sql hive sql is running so we can also check that hive sql from here so this is how you can easily deploy your spark using docker you can use it from jupyter lab you can use it from terminal you can use it for from visual studio core so yeah that's all done now thanks for watching video and from next video we'll start using this spark for learning spark and for solving data engineering problems thanks for watching